Hey there and welcome to a new episode on Unity's new high definition render pipeline. In this episode, I want to show you how to add a simple third person character to your game. We'll be using free high quality character models from Mixamo and we'll be using a free asset from Unity's asset store that provides us with a basic um, third person character controller. So let's get right into it. I'll be using this scene um, from the last episode. So I've extended it a little bit, like um, I've created a little more terrain and I've exchanged the procedural sky with this HDR sky. Um, but there's not much that changed. Uh, it changed the lighting conditions a little bit, but I've pretty much explained all of the setup steps in my previous episode. So if we, so if you haven't watched it, you should check it out. Um, it explains how to set up Unity HD render pipeline, all of the basic lighting uh, features and so on. So yeah, first thing we do is visit Mixamo. So Mixamo is a service from Adobe, which provides a lot of high quality uh, characters. So character models that are fully rigged and also a huge set of animations. And all of these are obviously standardized based on a standardized rig. So you can exchange all of these with all different characters. You can also upload your own characters um, and use any, any animation you want on all of these. So it's a pretty cool service. And a really cool thing is that it's absolutely free. You can use all of these assets for free um, in all kinds of projects. So Let's just select uh, any random kind of character. I'm just going for maybe Cho. Yeah, looks good. Um, so first thing we do is to download the model. On format, we select not FBX, but FBX for Unity. And the pose is fine when we use just the T pose and hit download. Okay, so I've downloaded the FBX file and I've just um, copied it over into my Unity project. And you should see this character asset here now. And if I just drag this in here, the model, you can see that it's just completely blank. So it doesn't really recognize the textures. Um, so this is an issue and I'm not entirely sure what's the reason, but Unity cannot directly process the textures that are contained in the FBX model. So what we have to do is um, click on the, the model file and here under materials, we have two options, extract textures and extract materials. And let's first extract textures. And here uh, I suggest creating a new folder. I call it materials and then select this folder. And essentially Unity is going to extract all of the textures from the model file into this separate folder and now we have the textures and uh, as you can see they are now also recognized but they look pretty strange don't they so um, the material settings are still uh, off so we want to also extract the materials because this way we can edit them directly uh, in unity so as you can see here, um, Unity has now created these two files and these are basically the materials which we can edit. If we click on our character and it doesn't matter which character you have uh, chosen from Mixamo, if you go to the details here, you should, it will probably have different parts and there will be a number of different materials. So with my character, it's pretty simple. There is only one material for the body, which also contains all of the clothes and so on, and one for the hair. And these materials obviously have different properties, but now they're not configured correctly. So the first thing we wanna do is adjust the body material. And as you can see here, we have a diffuse map, we have a glossiness texture, we have a normal texture, and we have a specular texture. So, um, Unity succeeded in actually converting the the materials to proper HDRP lit materials, which we will need for the HD render pipeline. However, with the new HDRP materials, there's um, this mask map, which contains uh, a number of things that were previously separated, like for instance, the glossiness. 
So um, we want to do a little trick now. We actually want to create a new material. I'll just call this Joe body. And this sh shouldn't be a HDRP material, but a standard material now. So in the old kind of material. And here we want to assign manually um, the diffuse map for the albedo, the normal map for the normal, and um, the glossiness for the metallic here. Oh, and one more thing, the normal maps actually have to be um, marked as normal. Uh, this wasn't done either uh, automatically, so this is very important. So select normal map and hit apply. And the same thing for the hair texture. As you can see, uh, it looks way better already now. And now we can um, make sure to select the material and then go to edit, render pipeline, upgrade selected materials to high definition materials and then hit proceed. And this will create an HDRP lit um, material out of this. And um, most importantly, because uh, the reason we did this is because it automatically generated a mask map. And the mask map essentially contains different maps for um, the different color channels. In our case, it's it was only the glossy map, um, but in my experience, this is the fastest way to actually do this. It's kind of odd, but uh, I, I couldn't find a better way for now. Yeah, so now there's a proper mask map and we still have to assign it though, because it's still using the old material. I guess it's best to delete the old one, that way we can see where the parts are. Okay, so it's everything other than hair and eyelashes, yeah. So, and then let's just drag the show body material to the missing material. So, okay, now the body part looks pretty fine, I think. So we can adjust things like smoothness a little bit. Um, so this would be this value, yes. So you can play around a little bit with these values. So I think this shader is done. So let's go to the hair. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that this is definitely not how it's supposed to look. So um, select the hair material. First thing we do is, is change the surface type to transparent. Okay, now it looks a little bit more like hair, but there are still some issues um, like this little uh, white transparent highlights. So in order to get rid of those, we have to check alpha clipping. Okay, this might take a little while. Yeah, but now it's done and the highlights are gone. And one last thing is, we, since the hair is similar to foliage, which we did in the last episode, um, kind of transparent and shine through, we want to enable subsurface scattering. And we do this by selecting material type, translucent and then we assign a diffusion profile. This is um, similar to last time when we did this for the trees and the grass. So we just select skin. It's not hair, and, uh, but it's sufficient. Okay, and I would say maybe reduce smoothness. Yeah, this is good because hair is not as smooth as that. Um, and I think that looks pretty good already. Okay, now that we properly imported the character and adjusted the settings for the HDRP, we can make a move and for that we'll add the third person controller uh, asset that I was talking about in the beginning. And basically we go to the asset store and search for third person controller, I think it should be fine. Yeah, and it's this one by Invector. So they have one of the most powerful third person controller assets and they also have a free version of the basic one. So make sure you select the right one. So it's basic locomotion free. And since I've already downloaded it, um, I can just hit import. Once that is done, we can take a look at their prefabs. So they have a third person controller light and a third person camera. Um, let's see, I think we need both of those. Let's leave our little character standing in his T pose for now and drag in their character, which apparently doesn't work with 
HDRP out of the box, I guess. Um, but whatever, we'll replace him anyway with our one. And also, uh, let's drag in the, the camera. I guess I'll be deleting or let's disable our main camera just in case and hit start to see if it works right out of the box. I think it should. Yes, so that's really cool. Uh, obviously the materials are not working, but you can see that um, the character is directly working out of the box. So also the camera is following along and it's behaving exactly as you would expect from a good third person character, like kind of like GTA, I guess. Yeah, but now, since we don't want this pink guy, we are going to replace him with our character. So for that, we select the third-person controller light, um, not the camera. And here we can see a bunch of settings which where we can configure input and certain properties. And we have an animator. So what we have to do next is to delete these two. Um, so this is the rig and this is the mesh of the example character. So we're gonna just delete these two and then drag into this game object our um, own character and make sure to reset the transform of this one. So now, um, if we now hit start, it shouldn't actually work yet. No, it, it, it shouldn't move. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, what's left to do is we have to once again go back to our character model and this time go to rig and select animation type, not generic, but humanoid. And here uh, make sure to select create from this model and hit apply. And this actually creates a standardized humanoid um, rig, which makes sure that all the other character animations that were based on a humanoid rig can be used on this one as well. So if we now go back to our character controller, select an avatar, we can see that here we have another one um, that is based on our character. This was just created um, during the process we just did. So let's just select this one. And now it, uh, the animator should actually be connected to the rig of our precise character. And let's see if it just works. And it actually does. So that is pretty cool, isn't it? So let's see what we can do with this character controller. We can walk around or like jog. And if we hit shift, we can run a little faster. And there are also like really cool transitions. There's a lot going on under the hood um, because like, as I already said, making like a, a good third person character controller is really hard work and they did a really good job. That is it for this tutorial. I uh, hope to see you next time when we are going to explore some more cool features and things that you can do with the Unity High Definition Render Pipeline. Until then, have fun creating your games and see you next time. Bye.